Let me make three points very short. Uh, so I run one of uh, India's platforms that Ashish Bhai has supported very generously over the last seven years. BSE and we have been uh, founding partners of something called the Sci-Fi, where we bring close to 300 young minds and discuss the future of technology, uh, finance, health, society, uh, violent extremism online, radicalization, mobilization, change, you know, the politics and various dimensions of everyday life and technology. And based on all of those conversations, I think I, Ashish Bhai has essentially told us three certainties. I, I, the first certainty, of course, is that no matter how many times we shoot ourselves in the foot as a country, and I don't mean demonetization, uh, but no matter how hard we try, uh, I think we are getting to that $10 trillion mark in the next 15 to 20 years. Irrespective of governments and policies, I think there is a certain degree of momentum that will take us to that in the next one and a half to two decades. So that's a certainty. The second certainty of this progress is that this growth has to be accompanied by the rise of cities and provinces. I think India has to be reimagined. The largest locus of interventions going ahead will come from municipalities, local governments, state governments, and then the center. So I think we have to now look at the pyramid upside down. The largest pot of wealth in this new seven and a half billion dollars, seven and a half trillion dollars that India creates as GDP will be led by progressively from the bottom of the pyramid. So, uh, and proverbially, the bottom of the pyramid will rise in, ten, in terms of opportunities, per capita incomes, access to various solutions, governance, systems, uh, public provisions, etc., etc. So that's the second certainty, that the role of cities and states is fundamental to India's growth from 2.5 to 10 trillion. The third certainty is that this will transform the purchasing power. In the next 20 years, India is going to bring in more citizens as consumers of services than the entire OECD as it exists today. So the size of the Indian transformation story, which will seek healthcare services, which will seek insurance services, which will seek pension plans, which will invest in equity markets, which will seek uh, more complex financial instruments is going to be bigger than the OECD market. The ticket size will be small, but more number of people will be participating in this revolution. And BSE will have to be BSE into 100x to cater to this. Now that growth of BSE is not going to be real. The growth of the instruments and institutions that will have to cater to this huge 700 million to 800 million new Indian participants will have to be virtual, will have to be tech-led, will have to be based on a mix of ideas, entrepreneurship and solutions. Most of the solutions will reside in your hand, the mobile phone or the personal device as it evolves. And I'm not sure whether the iPad will win the debate or the, or the mobile phone will. We are still uh, seeing that play out. But the personal device will be the most important platform for providing all of these particular solutions. So the FinTech challenge, as I see it, is three-fourths. And that is the uh, final point I'm making before I leave it to Costa to take us through. First, can the FinTech opportunity cater to the new demography that the old financial institutions have by design excluded? Either you are not credit worthy, either you don't have enough bank balance, either the bank account is very difficult to open, either the bank is very far away from you, either various factors that disqualify you prevent me from reaching you. So the first, can fintech do what the real world couldn't? Otherwise, we are still stuck at the same limited 100 million Indians to cater to. The 800 million come into play if we are giving products for a whole new class of democracy. That's the first fintech challenge. Second, can fintech create micro credit systems and bring the services to the level of a ticket size which will create an opportunity for everyone to participate. One of the barriers to access was the cost of access. If we can remove the cost of access to instruments, which is uh, make it accessible, affordable for everyone, affordability is an important element that will allow this 800 million to participate, climb up the ladder and eventually start paying back into the system. And I think that's the second challenge. How do we price our products towards the second half of a person's existence rather than price it up front. And I think we'll have to rethink the return on profits uh, paradigm if fintech has to work. And you can see that all over the world, 
most unicorns don't make money in the first 7 to 10 years of their operations. In, in real terms, they are not making money. It's all backloaded. Can we create a fiduciary system which recognizes backloading as a fundamental to fintech becoming available to all? I think that's the second challenge. And the third challenge, can fintech solve real world problems? And I think this is very important. If you look at the sustainable development goals we have all signed on, signed on to in 2015 and the climate challenge, mitigation challenge, challenge of clean energy, you will find that the global banking sector, the global financial sector has generally been slow in committing to those particular agreements that countries have committed to. So you will find that 86% of climate finance does not flow outside the border which means Paris, France will want India to sign an agreement, but French banks will not invest in uh, Indian solutions. So can FinTech create a degree of financial depth for countries to respond to their own challenges and, and, and uh, particular uh, uh, hurdles so that that itself becomes a new market for FinTech to address. So India luckily has plethora of challenges and problems. For the FinTech sector, each one of them is an opportunity. India is a land of opportunity for those who have solutions to offer. And I think with this, uh, I want to just confirm to all of you and rather uh, invite all of you to one, participate in all our technology conversations both in Delhi, Bombay. Those of you who want to come to Delhi on October 3rd, 4th, 5th, please write to Dhawal and Sayali and we will call you to our Delhi conversations. But we are going to be coming to your city. I was telling uh, 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 Kaustub and, and uh, Mr. Chauhan that we want to hold India's biggest AI conference here. Bombay must lead the AI and the machine learning um, conversation. Bombay missed the first uh, revolution. It, it must lead the second one that India is seeing. And we are at ORF are committed to sustain conversation, ideas, and, and discussions that allow Bombay to find its place uh, in the scheme of things. So thank you very much for joining us. And thank you, Double for hosting this. Thank you, Ashish Ji, for your partnership.